Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I want to do a quick video and talk about how to perform a trauma assessment. Now this trauma assessment is going to be to try to find major uh, problems, life-threatening injuries. It's also going to kind of make note of some uh, minor injuries, but what we're really trying to do is find the life-threatening injuries. So as we walk up to the patient, we're going to make sure the scene is safe, and of course we have our BSI on, which is gloves, if you want eye protection on, things like that, uh, we're going to have it on. But the first thing I always do is, of course, you're going to be able to kind of make know the scene, kind of what happened. Uh, think about the mechanism of injury. You know, did this guy get stabbed, did he get run over, did he fall off a house, you know, what happened? So it kind of gives you an idea there of what's going on. So I walk up and kind of get a general impression, you know, what's, you know, do I see anything that just kind of sticks out to me? Like, is there bright red blood squirting out of this arm or that leg? Do I see a large pool of blood up under his body? So kind of first thing we're looking for is major life threats and that being do I see bright red blood squirting out from somewhere or do I see a large pool of blood if I did then I would want to secure that blood first by stopping it obviously so if it's on the extremities I can hold pressure put a tourniquet on things like that and then if it's just pooling to be fair where the bleeding is coming from we want to stop it because we can't put red blood cells back in very easily so we want to make sure that we have all the bleeding control. All right, so you can come up. You want to hold hold C spine, hold the patient's head so he doesn't move, or you can get someone else to do this for you. So we hold that, and we want to check for responsiveness. Say, hey, hey, you okay? You know, if he doesn't respond, then we can do a sternum rub. You can squeeze his shoulder muscles right here, and kind of figure out if he responds. So that way, he's able to tell us what's going on, or if he's unconscious, we of course we understand that. We can find what's going on with him. That's why we're doing a trauma assessment. So we hold C-spine, that's secure. And then we're gonna check his airway. We've already kind of seen if there's any kind of major bleeding, but we wanna check his airway. So we can open it up. Doing that, do a jaw thrust. Take your fingers, put it just behind the jaw here. You should put my palms here and pull up on his jaw. This is considered a jaw thrust. This is gonna open up his airway. Look inside there, do we see any kind of blood mouth uh, inside the mouth? Do we see teeth? Anything that can be occluding the airway, then we're gonna secure it. We can do a jaw thrust that's gonna open up his airway, but we can also put an airway adjunct at this time. So we can look and see if he needs an OPA, MPA, something to help us hold his airway open. So now we've got A taken care of, let's move to B. So we want to see if our patient's breathing. Take note of that. Is it is it good quality? Is he getting good chest rise and fall? Uh, what's how many times a minute is he breathing? Usually we typically say less than eight or over 28. We need to use a BVM, a bag valve mask. Any less than that, we can go with a normal breather. Probably okay for oxygen wise. But looking uh, for breathing, you can also see if you're getting equal chest rise here. Uh, unequal chest rise is going to kind of give us a couple indications. Uh, this patient may have a pneumothorax, means he has um, a collapsed lung over here due to air or blood being a hemothorax into the chest cavity here. He can also have a flail segment, which is going to be two or more ribs broken here in a group. So you're going to see this segment right here kind of going in and out, uh, things like that. So uh, both of these are life-threatening injuries. We can listen to lung sounds here with a stethoscope. That's going to let us know if we have a pneumo or hemothorax. We put a needle in the chest, that'll take care of that. Uh, if he has a flailed chest, then we can put bulky dressing, gloved hand, probably needs to be intubated or CPAP, something like that. But for the average person, they can do a gloved hand, bulky dressing here. So now that we have the airway and breathing taken care of, the next thing we want to move to is circulation. So I typically do check pulse in a couple of places, especially if I have a patient who's unconscious. I will check for a radial pulse. Now this tells me that the patient's blood pressure is between 80 and 90 systolic. Sextolic being the top number. So that gives me kind of a good idea. So if I don't have a pulse here though, I can move up here to the carotid pulse and kind of let me know. So if I have a weak pulse here in the radial pulse, I will move up and check a carotid. Also while I'm here, I can kind of check the skin condition of the patient. You know, if they're cool pale diaphoretic, that's gonna let me know they're in shock. Uh, kind of look at their skin condition, things like that. Now here's where I typically go ahead and expose the patient. Uh, some people will use the phrase trauma naked. Um, we're kind of looking now, we're getting good quality, looking for major bleeding. So we've already started to look and try to see if we can find anything. So by this point, you've checked his airway, you've secured it, you've suctioned it, whatever you need to do. 
you've checked his breathing. Uh, if you have oxygen available, you put him on oxygen. You make sure he's got good chest rise and fall. If you have a hole in the chest here, some, a gunshot wound, and we could put a chest seal on it. You check for a flail chest. Uh, if you have a stethoscope, you can check for a, a, a pneumothorax or hemothorax. Um, so those are some things that are obviously are life-threatening. Flail chest, a hole in the chest, and then a pneumo or hemothorax, which can be caused by blunt trauma. And then we can move on to C, circulation. We've checked for a pulse. We've checked skin condition, and we checked for major bleeding once again. We checked for major bleeding when we first walked up to the scene, and now we've kind of exposed him and looked for other major bleeding. So this time you have exposed the patient. You haven't found any major life-threatening injuries at this point. So you should know if he's a priority patient or not. We're going to know that he needs to be rapid transported or he's just not injured and doesn't need to be rapidly transported. But you've got a pretty good idea because you've checked his ABCs. Now we can go through and do a detailed exam. And I usually start from head to toe on my detailed exam. That way we can kind of figure out, make sure we're not missing anything. So starting at the head, during our detailed exam, what we're looking for is called DCAP BTLS, deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, burns, tenderness, laceration, and swelling. And some people will even put a C in there for crepitus. So you can rewind it if I said it too fast, listen to it over again. So deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, penetrations, burns, tenderness, laceration, swelling, crepitus. So that's what we're looking here in the head. So I'm going to check the head here. I'm going to grow through looking for my gloves, looking for blood. I'm going to check inside the ears, looking for blood. I'm going to look for clear fluid, which could be cerebral fluid. Uh, we can do a halo test. We can check it for, it should be high in sugar. I'm going to look at the eyes, uh, looking for, make sure they're equal and reactive. If you don't have a pin light, cover your eyes up, move them back, and they should react for you. Look inside the nose, see if there's any major bleeding. Check the mouth again and feel the facial structures, make sure it's in line. So I'm going to check the throat area here. I want to make sure the trachea is midline. I want to make sure that the jugular veins aren't distended. And then I can also feel around here for the spine to make sure that it's all in line. I don't feel anything step offs or deformities or anything like that for around here. So then we want to expose the chest. If you had a stethoscope here, listen to lung sounds again to make sure that you aren't missing anything as far as decreased breath sounds. Listen here and here. I can also feel, make sure the rib cage is intact. There again, if you have a hole in the chest, seal it up. If you've got multiple broken ribs, put some bulky dressing, secure it. Check the abdomen, check all four quadrants to make sure that we don't have any tenderness. And looking there again, looking for DCAP BTLS. So we can move down to the pelvis now. We're gonna press down and in with the pelvis to make sure it's stable. You can check the genitalia as well. So moving down to the end here, we're gonna look for DCAP BTLS. We can check the foot here to make sure we have a distal pulse. See if we have any kind of sensory as well. You can run a thumb up the back of the foot. You can take your EMT shears, run it up, and then see if they can move their feet at all. So looking for PMS, pulse motor sensory. Run up through the leg here, check the other side as well. So I'll do the same thing on the arms here. Running down, looking for DCAP BTLS. You can feel for a pulse. See if they can move their fingers at all and feel for sensory here. Also, go across the other arm. Filling for DCAP BTLS on the other arm, pulse motor sensory. So now we've got the complete front side done. You want to log roll your patient. Hopefully you have some bystander helping you here that can help with the head, the whole C-spine in place. Come down, check the back side here. Looking up, making sure there's no bullet holes, anything, DCAP BTLS. You can feel along the spine, make sure it's clear. Check the butt, make sure it's good. Look for incontinence too. Make sure they haven't pooped themselves, peed themselves. Uh, that could be some signs of some serious injuries, obviously. Take the back of the legs here, DCAP BTLS. Now our patient is ready to go get transported to the hospital. We're going to package our patient however you feel need to do it, whether you need to put him on the stretcher, put him on a long spine board with a C collar, however you feel necessary that you need to do that. We're going to reassess vital signs every five minutes, recheck in you know, pulse, get a blood pressure on him, check our respiratory rate, Double check your Glasgow Comma Score, GCS. You also want to manage any kind of secondary injuries. This means bandaging the minor wounds, putting splints on, things like that. 
So I hope this video helps. You never know when you'll be the first responder, maybe the right gear and the right training. A video from Skinny Medic. I want to do a quick video for you guys and Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I want to do a quick video. I am out of the ears. Could be CHF. Not CHF. That's congestive heart failure, not cerebral fluid.